Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, every morning we start with the beats. What's up, guys? It is our last show of the week because tomorrow we become fatties and we eat as much food as humanly possible. Anybody here have any traditions that they're willing to share? Shams, what do you do? I just eat and watch football. I mean, <laughs> all my phone. that's it. We're the pretty, pretty the classic list. eat and watch football fam. Does anyone here cook anything? No. I feel like Lou What do you make, cook. Lou? Yeah, I knew it. Yes. I'm I'm part time chef in my in my family, so do you, I get busy. What do you make? Like, what's your what's your what's your dish? What's your special? Tomorrow, dish? tomorrow, I'm in charge of the mac and cheese, and I'm in charge mm. of the yams. Oh wow! Okay. Those are very important parts of the meal. Well done. Disappointed in you two, but also not surprised. Uh, <laughs> right, let's get this we thing help. started. Me and Chandler help. You, no, you yeah. don't. You just get in the way, I'm very sure. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> pretty, I'm pretty sure you guys are the host. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, host. Hosting. Um, all right, guys, there was a game last night that could have been a triple overtime game if you went off score alone, but it wasn't. It was regulation. Pacers beat the Hawks, highest scoring game of the season, 157-152. Oh Pacers win the East Group A, just like we predicted. Uh, they advance in the in-season tournament quarterfinals. Halliburton, 37-16. Trey, 38-8. And, and Murray threw in 28-3-5. and five. Okay, look, just enough. 309 points. Ooh. I know that we thought we weren't sure about this in-season tournament or if guys were excited about it or what they thought, but... Tell me that it's not working, Chandler. It's working to the standpoint, in my opinion, that people are talking about it and there's a little bit more juice on these games. I could agree with that, but I think old head hoopers are, are rolling over seeing all these points and no defense being played. But this is this is <laughs> what the, this is what the D, the NBA is now. This is what kids love to see. This is what kids want to do. You go to a local gym now, people are just running up and down, gunning long threes. That's what this game was last night. And it is, it's people even even the courts, for example. I know we always shit on the courts. We don't love the courts. Everyone I talk to keeps asking, what are these courts? So if that was the plan to make these courts as nauseating as possible for people to be mm -hmm. talking about it. Yeah, sure. And I think it is creating this buzz and more competitive games early on that we haven't had in the past, but it's, 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 it goes with anything. It's like a new restaurant, a new bar. It's, it's, this is a new tournament that everyone's going to try and you go and 309 points. You're probably going to watch again after seeing that. So I think it's working. I think it's given a little more jazz than we're used to in late November going into December, but still these at the end of the day, these guys are hoopers. And I think they're going to put on shows like this, whether it's an in season tournament game or not. Look, if you're the Indiana Pacers and you see a trip to Vegas around the corner, that's going to give you a little bit more incentive to play a little harder. And so now that these games are starting to get here, the tournament is in fruition. It's so close by. You're starting to see some good basketball in the in-season tournament. However, I am yet to hear anything positive about these courts. So I, think <laughs> I, I just, I hadn't, I, I, it's hard to look at, bro. It, it's really hard to look at. And so for this thing to stick and for it to be something in the future of the NBA, I think they're going to have to address the courts. Other than that, good basketball is being played. I feel like the, if the, the goal was to make the courts so ugly Right. That we talk about them and that they maybe they grow on us. I don't know. I, I you know it feels like that's what we're doing because we do talk about them a lot, a lot. I would like I would like to see the ratings. I would like to see hmm. are the fans actually tuning in to the in season games because I promise you, I'm not trying to be overly critical, but it is hard to watch these games with some of these courts. Even <laughs> even listen even matchups I'm interested in. I was actually gonna go to the Hawks Pacers game last night. Realized it was an in season turn, but said ah. I'm good. No, that's not true. I, I, pro I promise see, I can't do it. Problem. That's the problem because I think the NBA wants people to see it's an in-season tournament game and have more motive to go. You know what I mean? Wouldn't that, isn't that the whole point of it, that there's more juice to I, play harder? Like You know what I mean? So that's a problem alone right there. Just leave the trophy. Take away all the crazy colors and all the of the colors, the, the, the Marvel-looking stuff. Just leave the trophy i think that that is symbolism enough that it's an in season but, tournament game. but did you watch it on tv i tried i watched a lot of it because <laughs> that's yeah, really all that matters 
Like <laughs> at the end of the day, that's all they really care about. If we're being honest, um, I the all red's got to go. That to me is is hideous. But Tyrese Halliburton, uh, newsflash kind of good at basketball, had himself a night, 37 points, 16 assists, nine threes. We've been talking about him for a while, Shams, but now we got to move him up a tier. Is he emerging now for everybody as a top player in this league? I mean, he's already, I think, emerged as, as a top player. He's an all-star last year. He was a part of Team USA over the summer, and I think we, we're already seeing the Avengers for USA basketball being, uh, you know, being launched here for, for next Olympics. Tyrese Halburn's name is going to be a serious consideration for the Olympic team uh, next summer. So he's already in that category. I mean, you look at his stats last night, unreal. He's the only player in the league with multiple 25-plus point quarters. Like last night in that third quarter, 26 points. Like he has these barrages of, of offense where, yes, there was no defense played last night. It's, it's, it's tough to watch some of, the, some of the defense that's being played night to night. But when you look at that trade, that the Pacers made a couple years ago, trading Sabonis for Hal Burton. I think you have to look at that deal as a win-win. The Pacers got a lead guard. On the other side, the, the Kings were able to let De'Aaron Fox flourish. They were able to get a big man. But the Pacers now have a tone setter, have someone that they can really start their franchise. Everything moves with Tyrese Hal Burton, Indiana. And I think for him, you're starting to see the leadership qualities. You're starting to see everything come together for him. They need to get better defensively. There's no question about it. There's different things they got to refine on that roster. But for Tyrese Halliburton, he's a star. He's emerged as a star. And I think he's only going to get better and emerge, emerge himself as one of the top point guards in the league. Are you, are you hearing that they're good with the way the roster is? Is there any need or inclination to change things up, add anybody? Well, I think who's going to be the long-term running mate for Tyrese Halliburton at, at the shooting guard? I think you look at Benedict Matherin as maybe your three uh, long-term. He's coming off the bench now. You sign Bruce Brown. He can play anywhere in, in that lineup. But who's going to be the wingman next to him? Buddy Heald's on an expiring contract. I reported before the start of training camp. They were far apart on an extension. You know, guys like him, DeMar DeRozan, Clay Thompson, these guys aren't close on an extension. So, what happens with their future with Buddy Heald? He played well last night. He had a clutch three last night. They want to keep that team together. Uh, not sure what Buddy's role is going to be long term, but who's going to be that guy next to him? Is it going to be Buddy Heald moving forward? Is it going to be someone else? I think that's something that Indiana definitely is trying to figure out and could address. All right, Chandler Halliburton as the number one dude on a title contender. Are you seeing that? Yeah, we're seeing it right now. You look at this kid's numbers, they're, they're unbelievable. The guy's averaging 12 assists, 25 points. He's efficient from the field. He has a chance to be a, a 90, 50, 40 guy. And he just plays the right way. He, he's really taken that jump and everything last year with him finally getting recognition being the all-star. I think he's absolutely thriving in this Rick Carlisle offense, which is run and gun. They play with pace. They get out on the floor. They run a lot of pick and rolls. And he is a wizard with the ball. He makes the right decision. He makes the right read. He can shoot the ball. He is a perfect point guard for Rick Carlisle's offense. Do they need to add a lot more? Yeah, like we're the, we're, they're not close to a contender right now. Buddy Heald's been on the trading block his literal entire career. Hmm. Benedict Matherin has a future. I think he's a really good player. But again, this was like De'Aaron Fox yesterday. Can he be a number one option on a championship team? Sure, but he needs a really good two, he needs a really good three, and he needs, you know, he needs a deep team that's going to help him contribute. So, I love this kid's game. I think he's perfect for this situation. Back to the trade that Sham said, I've never seen a more equal trade where both teams, usually someone wins, right? I still don't know who won this trade because it's mutually unbelievable for both SAC and Indiana. But yeah, this kid has proven that he is a star. He's one of the top, not only point guards in the league, but he's an all-star. I mean, he's an absolute superstar uh, and he deserves it. But yeah, they got to add more pieces around them because if all of a sudden they start winning and they're in these, you know, 15 and five, 15 and four record, we're talking about Tyrese Halliburton as an MVP candidate. Yeah, well said Chandler. I don't have a lot to add to that. I just think they're ways away from being a title contender. I think he can be the number one guy, but they got to put so many different pieces around him for this team to be taken serious. So far, so good. They're right there in the middle of the pack with everybody else, but they're going to have to do a lot of adding for them to be a title contending team. But I think he can be the number one guy for a group Shining. if they put that together. Shining on this in season. By the way, just for the record, Lou, I feel like that particular court is not the worst. Like the blue at least is soothing. 
to the eye. Not to me. The red makes me angry. Like, see, nah. um, <laughs> see, this, see, this is this is my this the double red that's is the stuff. problem. That, yeah. That's the problem. It's, it's the fact that we don't know which one we like. Yeah, it's, it's, some are some are just much much worse um, than others. We're gonna stick with Halliburton here um, because he did say something about the style of play, the Pacers' weapon. That speed is their main weapon. Quote: Teams don't want to pl- uh, run with us. He said that opposing players want to play that style, but they don't want to play against it. Do you agree with that, Lou? Yeah, I agree. I, as much as this game I could watch last night, uh, barring the court, I watched this team fly up and down the court, whether it was inbounds plays, uh, free throw free throw uh, activities, whether it was just dead balls in general. This team was trying to score four seconds or less, kicking that ball all up the floor, playing loose, playing free, attacking the rim, shooting three-pointers. And it's hard to guard like that. Now, can this work during the postseason? We don't know. A lot of times teams are going to try to take away your strong suits and them being a running team in the playoffs, somebody is going to try to make them play in the half court. But so far it's been working for this team and it is extremely hard to guard. And so for him to say that a a lot of teams would like to play that way, but they don't want to play against it. I would have to agree. It's tough to play against a team like that. That's playing so free and doesn't have as much structure as you like. All right. So you mentioned the fact that come playoffs, it's, it's a little bit harder to sustain Chandler. Do you agree? Like can a championship team be built on this fast pace? Well, yeah, this isn't a championship team by any stretch, but this is this is who they are, right? When you have a roster like this, you got to separate yourself yourself somehow. And they are a young running gun team with athletic wings. They got a big in Miles Turner that can run the floor. They can also stretch the floor. So this is who they are. Now they need to find a way in the postseason to be able to get the ball in Tyrese's hands, to be able to pick the half court defense apart because there's going to be games where they're going to slow it down. When they have to play a Boston in the half court, are they going to be able to put up this many points? So I fully believe I played for Rick Carlisle. He is the best offensive minded coach that I've ever played for. So no doubt they could figure it out. But yeah, this is this is their DNA. This is who they are. And they have the head of the snake in Tyrese Halliburton that is super comfortable and thriving with this fast paced offense. They're well conditioned. They can shoot the ball. They space the floor. This is who they are. So, yeah, they, a lot of coaches say, like, do what we do. This is what they do. So I don't care if they go and play a Miami Heat or they play a team that wants to slow it down. They're going to try and get out in transition. They're going to try and do what they do every single night and instill their will on teams. And that's what they're doing. All right, Lou, you are our resident Atlanta Hawks expert, seeing that you are out there. What is the vibe in the city about this team? Is there a world in which you are we building around Trey Young? Like, what do you get sense wise? City's getting a little restless, you know, and I think that comes from they've seen success. They've seen that this group is enough to get it done with us making the Eastern Conference finals and making that making that push. And then, you know, coming back that next year and not having such a great year and then another season after that, not having such a great year again. And so the city is getting a little restless. We've tasted a little success and we want more of it. And so now the fans are kind of getting a little, a little itchy and they're ready to go. And so I I just don't know what's up with this group. Very talented group. I think they have enough to be competitive. I just, I don't know. Itchy is never good Chandler. Um, Would, is there a world (laughs) in which you consider moving on? Like, do you, do you get rid of Trey? Do you get rid of DeJounte Murray? Like, do you picture that happening? I mean, there was rumors all last year, right? That Trey Young was possibly getting moved, but I don't think he's a guy that you just get off of for a handful of role players. If I'm them, Mm -hmm. I'm getting something, you know, big time in return, or I'm going the OKC route. I'm trying to get a bunch of picks because they do have other young guys on that team that they can build with and they can grow with. But Trey, Trey, listen, Trey is a raw, is a rare talent. He can really shoot the ball. He's excited. He's just, as the point guard, you want someone in control. You want someone efficient. You look at Tyrese Halliburton, that, that, you know, the 90, 50, 40, Trey Young's not doing that kind of, uh, you know, efficiency. So I think as the head of the stake, you got to be under control and he gets a little rogue sometimes because that's the way he plays. It's the way he played in Oklahoma. That's the way he played in his first couple of years in the NBA. That's who he is. Now you add, I'm, I'm surprised that DeJounte Murray thing, kind of getting another guard to offload the pressure, let him play this, the shooting guard, let him come off screens. That hasn't really panned out as quick as I thought it would. But this team still has a bunch of talent. Trey Young is still a, an elite, elite player. But yeah, it's just for whatever reason, it's just it's just not showing up on the court each and every night. Uh, and this was my surprise. This was my this is my sleeper pick in the Eastern Conference. They're they're not making me look really good right now. But 
it, it's early. And again, I'm not just getting off Trey Young for anybody. It better be a lot. Right. I would like to see I would like to see Trey just completely buy in um to what what Coach Snyder is trying to trying to instill in, instill into this basketball team. You know, for him, you gotta think and, and so young in his career, this is his fourth or fifth coach, if I'm not mistaken. And so being his teammate and being in that gym, he's had some trust issues with with systems because he's seen so much turnover at the coaching position for this organization. And so he's had some issues with that. Now he needs to know that Quinn Snyder is a quality, really good coach, knows what he's doing. It's going to put him in great, great positions to be successful. Just a, I just need a total buy-in from Trey, and I think you'll start seeing some results from that if he does. As a big Big statement, Lou. Um, another game last night, the one that started to blow up our entire prop party. Thanks a lot to uh, Jazz Lakers. Lakers, th- this was easy, 131.99. They win West Group A, advancing to the in-season tournament quarterfinals. Anthony Davis was a good game. 24-16-4, and four, LeBron had 17. But the bench, the Lakers bench had 64 points. The Lakers were 4-0 in this in-season tournament, clinching that group. Uh, and it, we know it's the first season we're doing this. We've never seen this before, but... I'm just saying, Chandler, does it feel like LeBron really wants this just as another thing to add to his already very long resume? I mean, sure. This is in his mind. This is another thing on his resume that MJ can't have. So, <laughs> so sure, if we're, looking at the, if we're looking at the GOAT argument, yeah, this is just more ammo for him. And again, me and Lou talk about it all the time. I don't care if it's in season, not in season. These guys are these guys are playing hard, right? They're hoopers. They're playing for their contract. They're playing for all stars. They they they're playing for their legacy, whether it's in season or not. But yeah, sure, this is just another accolade for LeBron James, and this was a total just ass whooping last night, right? But I do love the bench played a lot, so they got four guys that scored double figures off the bench, but they played a lot of minutes. LeBron only played twenty four minutes, so anytime this early in the season that you can have LeBron James play 24 minutes and get a win that it's it's like two wins for them because he's not playing these high 38, 39, 40 minute games. He's resting, he's off his feet. And now they're fully loaded again for whoever they played next. So this is, this was a mature win for the Lakers that me and Lou did not see happening because we both took the Jets. (laughs) All right. I was shocked right. we both took the Jets, actually, to be honest. Yeah, None too. of us got anything right. So I think I think we got everything it's wrong. Called, it's um, called gambling. It's called gambling. <laughs> it's not called winning. Um, let's just take a look right now at the odds for the in-season tournament. Who's supposed to win it all? Well, right now, okay. That's what we have going on right now. That's the win. All right. You guys willing to take the Lakers to win it all? Anybody? Lou? Hmm. Nah. <laughs> I don't know. Just, I'm just going off <laughs> Uh, for intuition alone, I'm just I'm gonna pick the Minnesota Timberwolves. Oh, no, I like that. No, no diss to the Lakers. I just think the Minnesota Timberwolves are the team equipped to go win something They're of this right caliber. Now. Yeah, I take. The Timberwolves. Whoa, 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 whoa. what does that mean? Of I, this I caliber, think whoever wins the end season. I'm just going with my gut. Whoever wins the end season tournament will not win the the NBA championship. I think it'll be two different champs. Okay, so yeah, we're throwing was, out like my football. really yeah. good right now. What did you say? I don't trust the Lakers. Lakers look really Vegas. good right now. Yeah, well, listen, the Lakers I, win it. Yeah. That'd be something if they whoever got a clean sweep with the with the the dual championships. You and both. I just don't. See, I think it's going to be not the Minnesota Timberwolves, but it's going to be someone like like the Pacers can come ha- somehow win this thing. I think. I think it's going to be someone completely random. I mean, at plus twelve hundred, I mean, they only got to win two games, worth. right? Yes, it's the it's the it's yeah right. Don't they go? They it's two games. Yeah, because now we're it's knockout right now. Once we get, yeah, I think we're in the quarters. Yeah. So give quarters, me the, semis. Give me the Pacers plus twelve hundred. By the way, we don't how know good, anything. How how good is this TV? It's four people, actually three and a half. Shams, you're good, but it's us just going. Okay, they have to win three games. <laughs> Wins is all. Awesome. Yeah, Pacers. I like. It. Yeah, Pacers. I don't. I'm. I might put some money on that once I get out of a state that doesn't allow me to do it. Um. Okay, Austin Reeves. This he might be the poster child for sort of. What does it matter if you start or if you come off the bench? Because the big thing was Darvin Ham said he's not being demoted. We're just moving some things around. And since then, 19-5-5 five and five last night, his numbers are good across the board. Um, how much of it, Lou, do you think it is maybe just taking simply some pressure off of Austin Reeves? Uh, a lot of pressure off him. And he's playing, he's playing with a different group of guys. He's playing with the second group. So that gives him the freedom to go out and do his thing and kind of be the lead on that second group when he's out there on the floor. 
And like we mentioned, like Chandler and I mentioned before, when it comes down to that first group, you're getting scouted. You're in the scouting report, and that's a different set of rules for you. You know, some teams are going to take away some of your strengths and make you play differently. And so with that second group, he's playing against guys that's not as good on the defensive end, playing against a group of guys that's probably not going to be as talented as the first group. So that's giving him an opportunity to go out there, play uh, play freely and strive like he's been doing um, before he was put in the starting lineup. And I don't care what a coach says. If you go from a starter to the bench, it is a demotion. I Damn. don't care how you chop it up. Chop it, up. <laughs> it is a demotion. God. Yeah, and I'll say this. Listen, Austin Reeves, his life changed in the last six months, yeah. right? So he became this household name. He became, and I don't care what you say, as a player, there, there is pressure that comes with that. So whether he feels it or not, he is putting pressure. He's making more expectations on himself to play well, which you can see him earlier on the season. He's forcing, and then he missed his shot, and then he's and nothing's going right. He's making careless turnovers, and then it's just you feel like you can't get yourself out of this hole. I think it was a great move by Darvin Ham. You lessen the blow. You take tell him it's not a demotion, which clearly it is. But it's, not, but it's not permanent. It's not permanent. I can see them him coming back in the starting lineup once he gets his legs under him, once he finds a rhythm, once someone goes down, he's going to end up in the starting lineup. In the playoffs, I think he's going to end up starting, and he's going to be, you know, their two, three option on any given night, like he was last season. But this guy, his whole world was flipped upside down from Team USA to his own shoe. And that is a lot of heavy expectations from a kid who's who had the path that he did to get here. And so I think it was great. I think now he's finally getting comfortable. He's having fun. He's back to him. You know, I haven't heard him scream, I'm him yet, but he's got the swag coming back. Uh, and he's getting back to how he was last year. So I'm happy for him because it is. It is a dogfight when you get in a slump in a hole like he was in the, in the early of the season, and he seems to be crawling out of it. I, I really wanted to hope that it wasn't a demotion. My entire world has just been shattered. Thanks okay. a lot, guys. <laughs> so, Fing, uh, we don't talk about the Jazz a lot, Shams, but they have Jordan Clarkson. They have Laurie Markin, and two obviously good players. I know we're, we're only at Thanksgiving here, but is it a possibility down the road that we see this team, should they continue on this path, become big sellers? <laughs> we, we we talked about them as big sellers last year and they yeah, were we like did. competitive all year and I, I think that was kind of a surprise for everyone but I, I think given how competitive they were last year they had expectations of trying to get into the playoffs this year I think that organization they wanted to take baby steps and, and get into the plane get into the playoffs and try to contend for for a playoff berth but they've gone two and seven in the last nine games obviously they they are not as competitive to start this year as they were last year they're not surprising teams like they did last year um you know one thing that's interesting they did make an offer for drew holiday i'm told when drew holiday was traded to the, to portland and then he ultimately got traded to boston like they made a bid for him uh a, a, and a pretty aggressive bid and i think by getting him they felt like they would take a, a big step forward so i could see them being actually the other way and trying to be more aggressive to try to get better and try to put this team more in position to compete in the playoffs Interesting. Chandler, is anybody on this team untouchable in your mind? Oh, God. No, no. Touch them all. They're, they're, they're all available. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, listen, I, they love Laurie Marketing. They love Walker Kessler. Uh, they do have pieces that kind of blew up last year. No one expected Walker Kessler to be this good and this productive early. And looking back to last year, this was a team that we thought were going into the season tanking and they ended up, they were, you know, top three team in the Western conference for the first month of the season until everything finally balanced out. But no, I think that they should be the ultimate sellers. I think they could, you know, they can add some pieces to this, to this core of those guys I mentioned with Jordan Clarkson, but they're such a long ways away. I think everybody is on the table for this team. It's the right move. All right, I, Lou, what do you think? Anyone untouchable in your mind or also what Chandler said? <laughs> Ditto, sell off. Ditto. A, team, a team can't be four and 10. And when, when you ask, if, or do we, are this the path they want to be on? Hell no, they don't want to be on that path. Hell no. No, it's depressing. Um, Simple enough. Got myself in trouble. All right. There, I think I just remembered the court last night that was bad. It, it's this next one, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Cavs, we're still Sixers. At it. Ah, there it is. I hate it. Uh, Cavs beat the Sixers. It did take an overtime. They do stay alive. It's so much red. Garland, 32, 5, and 8. Allen, 26, and 13. And Bede had 32. Maxi had 30. Uh, there's no Mitchell, no Levert. And yet, Cleveland found a way to beat Philly. 
How much confidence does a game like this instill in a young team like Cleveland? Chandler, you first. Yeah, you heard me. You heard me talking before the show. No one's talking <laughs> about. No one's talking about the Cleveland Cavaliers, and to be able to go and get this type of win without two of your main guys, it's super impressive. This is a team that I know I had high expectations for after getting home court advantage last year and losing to the Knicks in the first round. This team is ready to take the next step, and this is a huge win for them. Donovan Mitchell's been in and out of the lineup. They have been banged up, but this team has so much talent. They can hurt you in multiple ways. I love the double guard look with the bigs, with Mobley and Jared Allen. There was I felt like the game was on replay last night where every time Garland got in the lane last night, Joel would step up. They'd throw a lob to Jared Allen. Mobley. So many lobs like that um, that was effective. But yeah, to be able to go and, and everyone's talking about how good Philly is and how Tyrese Maxey's blowing up and the Celtic, no one is giving the Cavs a shot. So they just need to continue to tread water. And when they're fully healthy, they are deep. They still got guys like like Ricky Rubio, Okoro. These guys, they, they're, they're, they're banged up. They're in and out of the lineup. When they're fully healthy, I think they're one of the deeper teams as well in the Eastern Conference that can give you different looks, that can go small, that can go big. And Donovan Mitchell, again, it's it's what have you done for me lately? And when he's playing, he's been pretty good, but he's just been missing some games. So when they get fully loaded, I fully expect the Cavs to, to be right there in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, I thought that was a little – I thought that game was a little misleading. Even though they had guys out, they still had really good players in that lineup. You know, show some love to, to Struess. He's been playing out of his mind another 20-point night. Uh, Darius Garland – 32 points. Jared Allen, another big night. Also, um, what's my man name? Uh, Evan Mobley, another big night. So like Chandler said, this is a very deep basketball team. And so even though they had a lot of pieces out, they had a team on the floor that, that could go out there and go win basketball games. And they showed last night beating a good Philadelphia team. Shams, I throw away the obvious, but take me through the difference between this team with Donovan on the floor and without him. Well, when I talk to people around the Cavs, you know, when they got Donovan Mitchell, there's a difference between Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is regimented. Every day is, is scripted. Like, he's very meticulous, very focused day to day. Darius Garland's kind of this, you, you never know night to night what moves to expect, what he's going to do. He's kind of, he, he plays loose out there in the best of ways, right? Like, last night, that hezzy move he had on Joel Embiid to go with the lefty layup, like, that was something special to watch and the way he he dissected the game down the stretch that bank in three obviously I don't know if he called bank or not but that was clearly a dagger moment when Donovan Mitchell's out of the game to me this is a team that that is by committee they rely on everyone Evan Mobley has a double double Jared Allen gets a lot more touches um Struce obviously played big for them last night DG with uh, Darius Garland with, with 32 8 and 5 three steals as well so to me it's just a different, it's kind of night and day. It's by committee. And then when Donovan Mitchell's in the lineup, they rely a lot on him. So how can you balance it out if you're Cleveland? And I think a lot of that just comes through reps and guys being on the court. When Donovan Mitchell's on the court, sometimes Garland's out and vice versa. So getting on the court, building chemistry, I think is very important. But they've won, I think, three in a row now, the last two wins over Denver and over Philly. Like those are really quality wins to have. And you have to give the Cavs front office credit. They beefed up the roster. Um, you know, now that you have Max Struess, you have George Niang, you have Karis LeVert, you re-sign him. So this is a deeper team, like Chandler said. I think this is a team that can definitely make noise if they get on the same page. That's interesting because those are two big wins. Uh, but Donovan Mitchell, he's missed the last three games. So that's a very interesting little nugget to that. They're eight and six, Chandler, but they've only had their actual starting five for five games. I know it's probably frustrating as a coaching staff, but ceiling-wise, if if – this is sort of the way the season's going to go out. What is the ceiling? Well, I think it's promising that they've only had their normal starting five for five games. It's a small sample size, and their starting five is very, very good. So when they're fully loaded again, they are a tough team to beat. And when if I'm JB Bakersaf and I'm looking at this Eastern Conference, there's no reason why I'm not gunning for home court advantage again. And But now there's different pressure on this year for them. I think like the Sacramento Kings last year, them making the playoffs, great. Cavs, Young, make the playoffs, great. But now can they advance? Now can they take the next step? And like Sean said, they did add some vets with Max Struess, who is playing very well, shooting the ball. George Yang can really space the floor for them. They're, you know, once they get a Coro back, I don't know Ricky Rubio's timeline. They got they got a deep, deep team, and they're young. So they have again, they have multiple ways to hurt you. But outside of Philly, Boston, Milwaukee, 
they're right there. I like them better than Indiana. I like them better than Miami. I like them better than, you know, Orlando or whoever else of these teams that you consider, you know, a top eight team in the Eastern Conference. The Cavs have no reason not to go get home court advantage. And then obviously the goal was to advance, which they failed to do last year. Uh, Lou, the bench for the Philly side of things. What do we say? The Lakers bench had 64. This is the exact opposite of that, right? So their stars did what stars do. They threw in a million points. But the bench for Philadelphia, 16 total points. And right now the Sixers are ranked last in bench scoring. Uh, 82 game season, big hopes for making it to a title game. Lou, this bench, what do we do? They need somebody to score. I'm, I'm looking at them now. Robert Covington, uh, Mark Morris, Daniel House, Paul Reed, and Pat Beth. Defensively, this is pretty impressive second unit. I don't know who's going to score that basketball. I say you put that ball in Morris' hands and let him work out of the out of the mid post. He's going to be a guy that can give you buckets on that bench. Other than that, how they're built is going to be difficult for them to score points off the bench with this group. Go get you in 10 days. <laughs> yeah. No. My, my 10 days have expired. I'm happily retired <laughs> and done. <laughs> Darn it, that would have been kind of fun. Um, look, Shams, we know Kelly Oubre is out for the foreseeable future. Lou's talking about who's going to score. Is there Are there any plans maybe coming that they could possibly be in the running for, you know, a DeRozan, a Levine, since we're going to be talking about those guys until they move? I, I think in the short term, it's getting Kelly Oubre back on the court. He's been out with the fractured ribs, and I think the, the Sixers are hopeful over the next couple of weeks he's going to be able to get back in the lineup He's going to be reevaluated next week, and he's going to start going through contact, some five-on-five. Five. And if he passes through all that, I think the next one to two weeks is realistic. So you drop in a guy that had multiple, you know, a couple 20-point games already this year. He's averaging, I believe, 16 points a game. So getting him back in the lineup, whether it's coming off the bench initially or starting where he was right after the James Harden trade, they put Kelly Oubre in the starting lineup, and he played exceptionally well. So getting him back, I think, is the short-term move that they're – hoping to make that's going to be like making a trade right there especially considering they thought he'd be out a while so get him back in the lineup but i think overall yeah they have three first round picks to trade i think they're going to be very ju judicious i think they're going to be patient i think they're going to see who else could shake free there's still time between now and the february trade deadline but i, I think there there will be interest in a guy like zach levine more of a score uh, but they're going to take a patient approach so much time. All right, Tobias Harris Chandler has been a very interesting story. His story arc in this league has been up, down, middle. Right now, it's a pleasant surprise. He's doing all right. Career high, fifty-six percent shooting. Is he a is he a viable third guy? Oh yeah, he's great, and he can be more than that on any given night. And I think with this dynamic duo they have with the big Joel, with the speedy Art and Tyrese Maxey. He's a perfect fit. You know what I mean? He's a versatile player. He can You can post him up. He can get out and run. He gives them a different look and a different option of scoring the basketball. And I think his him being so efficient this year is obviously is the reason why you're seeing him thrive. But he's played with good players. He knows how to play off guys. He's a great guy. He's a great teammate. He's perfect for this situation. And Sean touched on it. When you get him and Kelly Oubre, healthy, that are both athletic, versatile wings that can defend, that can switch pick and rolls. Now, now this team is cooking, right? And But yeah, Tobias Harris, he's a guy that can go get you 30. When Joel's out or Tyrese Maxey's out, he has that, that skill set and that talent to take the next step. But I think he's the perfect three option on this team, and this team is definitely a contender. Yeah, you don't have a choice. He, he is the third <laughs> option on a title contending team. And I've played with Tobias twice. Piss him off. He plays a lot better when he's pissed off. So, nice. Pat Bev, if you're listening, I know you're still upset with us. Piss <laughs> Tobias off. Every opportunity you get, he's going to play a lot better. He's not upset with us, Lou. He's upset with Chandler. Upset with you. no, child. You're the one that threw everyone <laughs> under the bus. And I will never forget no. that moment. Uh, <laughs> Shams. Shams. He's not mad at me. <laughs> no, he's not mad at you. Shams, we are grateful for you and thankful. And uh, I hope you appreciate your day tomorrow. Have fun with the fam. And we will see you bright and early on Monday. For us, Happy holiday, see you guys bitter soon. brick. Running back, yeah. Run it all, the running back, yeah, yeah. Run it all, run it back, run it all, run it back, run it all, run it. Probably my favorite thing to do at all ball time. Yes, here we go. <laughs> Bit or brick, Cole Anthony. <laughs>
No, this is no. A brick. 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 It's a. It's like half private school uniform, half I don't know. It's horrific. Bring the dress code back. It kind of. It's like <laughs> I got a Stevie Wonder vibe. I don't know. I don't know what to do with it's, any of this. Uh, oh. <laughs> what we got here? That, it's a, <laughs> what do we? <laughs> is that a pirate hat? Honestly, if you just if he loses the hat, I'm fine. If he loses the hat, you can't lose the hat. But the hat is the selling piece. You can't. But what? The hat is the selling piece. But what is it? What's happening here? But why? You're playing the Lakers? The, I don't know. I don't get the tie-in. Shit like this something? makes me feel just so old and just not with it because I am just not rolling with this. Pirate hats yeah, for all of us. Outfits for next week. By the way, I love Jordan Clarkson because he's the <laughs> gift that keeps on giving. Um, it's we got another one. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, you, you know what? Ba baggy is back. So the pants I'm rolling with. I like the pants. That first hat though. How about Will sneaking in astray at the kid in the back though? <laughs> the, guy, <laughs> the guy in the back's outfit sucks. Too. That went in. <laughs> Baggy's like Baggy's in if you're tall and skinny though. By the way, okay, now we're talking. <laughs> that is very Eddie Murphy raw. Prince, this, oh, nice. uh, I mean, too much leather. If anyone can, yeah. Picture how sweaty just his balls are in that outfit. Are you chafing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not this in. Ain't I'm not it. In. You have to be either top is leather or bottom is leather. Yeah, we're talking bottom. we're talking JC and Kuzma. These guys are like runway type of dudes, but they are. No, 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 no. No, they really are. They're both like models. Maybe I'm just basically. maybe I'm just an old man at this point. Well, you are, but that's not what we're talking about. Uh, all right, Josh Akogi. The glasses mm -hmm. are ski giving me ski lift. Josh, you from the neighborhood? You know better than that. <laughs> These are all, these are all poop. Man, so we have all bricks. We have not had a fit yet. Okay, good to know. That's, that's all right, Chris Stops, give us something. There, there we, we go. go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> class, class, class. Classic. Keep it classic sometimes, man. Guys, I, th I think we're not the go. demo. <laughs> we, we might not be the audience we, for the fashion. We are we definitely need, not the demo. We might need different judges. Is that for those are ninety percent bricks? That was a uh, yeah, at least if not more. All right, well yeah, done, Christoph. We'll take a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to take a look around the league at some surprising yeah, starts on Run It Let back. me take five. Let me take. Five. Yep. That's what we're doing. We want to take a look at the league and uh, some surprising starts. And mind you, surprising isn't always positive. But for this first team, it is Minnesota Timberwolves. Very positive start. They're 10 and three. And right now, the top spot in the West. That's pretty impressive. Mm. Um, the ceiling for this team, Lou, what is it? They can be really good. I don't know if they hold on to that number one spot, but I think it's time. I think it's time for this group to show and prove. You know, they've been together a couple of, a few years now. And, you know, they're starting to turn that corner. They just paid the kid uh, McDaniels. They just gave him his money. And then, you know, you have an Ant-Man-led team. And then you have Cat playing out of his mind. Rudy Gobert is controlling the boards. Mike Conley is always finding himself in positions to make big shots for this team. And they have a six-man in Nas Reed. So this team is built for success, built for the long run. So I think they, I think they can stay top four. All right, top four. I mean, look, with this this is a team that seems to disappoint, or at least specific players on this team seem to disappoint us each season. Um, they are sitting in the top spot. Top-rated defense in the league, Chandler. I, that saying that out loud is a little bit weird. Is there a possible, or do, you, do you have a vibe, a vision, where you could see them being the best team in the West, or right now there's just too many ahead? No, I can't see them. Listen, this is a great start. Listen, they're 10-3. Nobody expected them to be here. But when you have a guy like Anthony Edwards, and he's your best player, and he does it on both ends of the floor, that sets, that sets the tone. And, and he is – I've seen clips of him late in the games getting down, almost like – Duke style slap in the floor and he has embraced this where I genuinely think he's the best two way player in the NBA. So when you have a guy like that, that's doing that, that fuels the other guys. And now they have the, one of the better defensive team, the best defensive team in the NBA because Kyle Anderson, uh, Alexander Walker, Jay McDaniels, he just got his bag. These guys all lock up and they are honestly defense first guys than offense. 
We know how talented uh, Ant is. We know how talented Carl Anthony Towns is. So when you get this combination of guys that buy into the defensive end, plus you got guys that can go and get 40 on any given night, it's a deadly, deadly combo. And this team, I, I, are, they, are they a championship contender? Who knows? There's still a lot of basketball to be played, but they couldn't ask for a better start. And again, I, I say every time, Anthony Edwards is my favorite player in the NBA. It's because the effort he does on both ends. He wants to guard the best player on the other team. He wants to dig in. You know, Tatum has the ball at the end of the game. He's guarding him, not McDaniels, not Kyle Anderson. Anthony Edwards is doing that. So he has set the table for them. He set the tone. And it's very rare nowadays you see your best offensive player as your best defensive player. And Anthony Edwards is their everything. It's crazy because I have yet to hear anybody – say a bad thing about Anthony Edwards. It's it's basically everybody likes watching him play, Lou. For him to be in the MVP conversation this season or any time, what has to happen? Consistency. Just stay stay where you are. 26, 26, 6, and 5 are the numbers that's going to get it done, but then it's going to go to the winning side of it. You got to keep this team in a top three, top four spot. You know, nobody really expected Minnesota to be where they are. They, they got to little leeway with some slippage. They can slip to a three. They can slip to a four. And I think his name will still be in the running. But just staying consistent, staying where he is. I think he he gives himself an opportunity to be in that conversation. All right, I'll so this next guy. Oh. I feel, I feel okay. like for him to be the MVP, they have to be the one seed. Because I think Jokic, I think Luka, these guys' numbers are going to be so outrageously gaudy where he's got to separate himself by winning. So I would love to see him. He's going to be in the talks just because they are winning early on. But – I think for him to actually win the MVP, that he's got they got to run away with the number one seed and separate themselves because there's so much talent in that Western Conference. Kevin Durant right now is unbelievable. Yep. Steph is unbelievable. There's guys that are on less winning teams right now. So if they can consistently win, like Lou just said, but I think they got to stay at the top for, have, for him to have a shot. Well, so the next guy is a guy that um, has, I mean, look, he's put himself in the position sometimes where he's a target for a lot of us who talk for a living. But Carl Anthony Towns, in nine of his last 10 games, has had 20 or more points. In that time, the team is nine and one. This version of Cat Chandler, is it sustainable? And how far can they go if he does keep this up? I think it's very sustainable. I think he is one of the better bigs in the league. He's been on record saying he's the best shooting big of all time, which that might be a bit of a stretch, but he can play. And like you said, he's done, <laughs> some, he's done some things that kind of rub people the wrong way. He said some outlandish things. He's not the most likable guy personality wise, but the kid can hoop and he is, he is huge and he can, dribble he can facilitate the offense he can step out and shoot the three and i think he's a perfect big to play alongside anthony edwards now they tried last year with the double big with rudy and i think that helps them defensively obviously they're the number one defensive team in the nba i don't know if that panned out exactly the way they expected it but carl anthony towns was the number one pick for a reason he's been multiple all-stars he is a very 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 good player and i think he is perfect with that end of game two-man game you can't stop them both. You can't double team them both. So I think he is a great Robin to the Batman of Anthony Edwards. And it's going to, it's going to take a huge season for him too. Anthony Edwards isn't going to do this himself. He's got to stay healthy and he's got to be giving them, you know, 25, 12 every single night for them to stay in that number one spot. I feel like this is weird. Cause I feel like we, we kind of ripped that dude a lot and this is the version that people want to see. So we'll see, but uh, we're going to move on right now to the Warriors. Look, Steph's hurting. Draymond still got another two games on his suspension. They have lost six of their last seven. And, and deja vu from last year, they're two and six at home. I feel like I'm contractually obligated to ask you this. We'll start with you, Chandler. But is this <laughs> the beginning of the end of this Warriors dynasty? Yeah, I mean, I think that was last year. Honestly, yeah. I think they could see kind of that step back last year and we all know Clay has gone through just horrible injuries and he's grinding his way to get back. And, and Clay started off struggling last year and he figured it out. So I'm not counting him out to figure it out. But when you look at this, this the roster of this team, they're all out of their prime except Steph Curry. Andrew Wiggins should be taking that step forward and being that second option right now. And he's not. He's having career low season as well. So that's really hurting. And then as much as you like or hate Jordan Poole, when you get rid of that many points, 
who's going to score for them? It's not going to be Draymond. Clay's struggling to shoot. Steph Curry's going to average 35 points. But if we have Andrew Wiggins averaging 12 points a game, I just don't know how they're going to win. Draymond's in and out of the lineup, and he's their heart and soul defensively. They haven't figured out the defensive end. They haven't figured out their offense. So it's hard not to look at their age and everything they've been through. But, I, again, I'm never counting them out. They have the DNA. They have the culture. They have the coaching. And they have Steph Curry. So I'm not too worried. But I think the dynasty is if, if it's not it's not over, it's definitely tre- it's treading south. That's the first time I've ever seen you kind of watch what you say. Ooh. <laughs> that, that's the first time I've seen that out of you. You, you know really what? respect it's, the Warriors. It's, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to go at them. Everything they've done, the the, the resume they have. What are you going to say? They're, they're, it's over. It's not over till it's over with these cats. I agree. That's fair. That is fair. The Clay Thompson of it all, I, I think, is one of the parts that we'll be watching. Um, he's, you know, we all know the situation, right? He probably wants to stay there. Doesn't seem like they want to pay him what he wants. And he just happens to be having an awful year at the same time. The timing is awful, Lou. Is there a world in which you could see them shopping him at some point and he's not going to be a warrior when it's all said and done? I can't see it. I can't, I can't see it. This has been an organization who's been extremely loyal to their guys. They've gotten four championships out of this group. These, when you think of Warriors basketball, you think of the Splash Brothers. You think of Klay Thompson. You think of Steph Curry. And you also think of Draymond Green. Those three guys are on the Mount Rushmore of Golden State basketball. So I don't see a world where you shop Klay Thompson because you're at the end of a dynasty or – He's not playing as well as we're used to. Look, the guy just came off an ACL tear. Those things take time. And so the struggles that we're seeing from him, I think, are due to that injury. Him still trying to find his footing, trying to find his consistency and and what he can do for this organization. But I I just can't see a world where they shop Klay Thompson. No, there's no – if they're going to move someone, it's Draymond. I'm just – Picture in, in what? five, in five, ten years, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, they're going to have a job with this organization. They're going to be running the Golden State Warriors. I can't picture them leave. If it's one of those three, it's going to be Draymond Green. There's no way Clay or Steph are going anywhere. Dude, they like they have Draymond's back more than anyone ever would even think about having it. I can't picture that. So imagine either. how they feel about Clay. <laughs> yeah. Point. Clay needs water. Indiana doesn't have water. Bucks, Celtics tonight, battle of the big dogs in the East. We'll talk about that next. Running back, yeah. Run it all. Running back, yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Well, we might not be good at it, but we're never going to stop. Prop party time. Chandler, go. Okay, we got a big game tonight. I think Giannis goes nuts. I think he has over 28 and a half. And I think it's time Jalen Jalen Brown, he struggled last game, was super inefficient. I got a lot of points here, both overs. Lou. I'd like Drew to have a, a big night against his team. And for Drew, a big night is 15 plus. So I got him going 15 plus uh, against the Bucks. And then Porzingis, four made threes, big night. Rebound party for me. Boom, take it. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. See you overs. Monday. Run it up, the running back, run it back, run it up. Running back, yeah. Running it up, the running back, yeah.